So what we do after the event is we have a list of attendees. So we, we try to call them all immediately and, and ask for feedback and then yeah. ask that, okay, what well, was good, what was bad, but also at the same time, will you come back? So, so we, we talk with each customer and uh, interact a lot with them. So kind of like it's, it's not a heavy sales calls that you buy. First, we want to listen to what, mm. what, what you have in your mind. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to watch the latest episode of, of Tips for Producers. And today we have the privilege and honor to have as a guest Aslak De Silva, who works nowadays as the CEO of Nordic Business Forum. So, could you, Aslak, briefly tell us how do you involved to the story of Nordic Business Forum, and who are you, and what is Nordic Business Forum overall? Yeah, thanks for having me here. Pleasure to be here, first of all. And uh, yeah, Nordic Business Forum is actually a business seminar, leadership seminar that was founded in Jyväskylä, Finland. The first event was uh, about 10 years ago with 80 people. So the co-founders Hans-Peter Siefen and Yuri Linden came up with an idea that actually they loved learning and, and they thought that speeches is a way to learn. And uh, they founded the first seminar. They had 80 people in 10 years tickets and they thought, well, this is an easy thing. Let's make it bigger. And uh, the event grew from 80 to 700 the first years there. They got more professional speakers and then they went really big. So they actually um, thought that since it was first in Finnish, so they let's make it international. And they, they were thinking of themes. They thought of sustainability being a big te theme there. And uh, they were thinking who's the biggest person who could talk about that. And in 2011, they thought of Al Gore being that. And then they started the process inviting him here to come to Uvascula and so on and they actually managed to get that and there are a lot of good things happening of course not an easy way and um, and from there it started to build to be an international event i think the secret of the nowadays we have uh, almost 8000 people in in helsinki um, attending more than 20000 people watching the live stream and uh, so so from 80 to 8000 in 10 years uh, kind of the secret being that customers come back so so i think that is the the key takeaway that i want to talk about as well and hopefully sharing some tips on how you actually keep your customers there i myself first at in um, 2014 um, i remember first speaker that i heard on stage was jim collins i'm a big fan of uh, good to great books and whatever yeah. he has written there arnold schwarzenegger being there and i was like dazzled that uh, i want to be be here that this yeah. is the place to be and i sat down there customer experience was excellent i was greeted i got everything and it was super easy when i thought of getting drinks or something i was already served the drink so if i needed to go to the toilet somebody was guiding me there and so <laughs> on so so i was like that oh my god that apart from the speakers the overall experience was great so so after the for, after the first event i attended all the possible events and uh so, so I was super fan of Nordic Business Forum for a long time and I was talking, um, trying to help them to go to other countries as well. And then they were looking for, for a new CEO since the founders thought that, well, for the accelerate the growth for international markets, they would need a person to take care of that. And of course, they've been doing it for 10 years. So, so they got, needed some new ideas. And uh, um, then they talked with me. I thought about it and then I, I kind of thought that since I pay for that myself, what yeah. if I get paid to do that? So yeah. I was super excited to join the team and uh, now I've been here for about two years now running it and uh, especially like the growth in the international markets has been now rapid and now we have events in Helsinki, Stockholm and Oslo and, and expanding in the future. Yes, that's good. So today we're talking about the superior customer experiences and uh, as you mentioned earlier, you have had those yourself as an attendee first. So um, how can an event build the culture and habits to serve superior customer experiences? Well, that's a good question. Uh, I think, of course, it's many folded, so it's not that easy. I think the first kind of the realization is that why do you want to do that? 
so so basically of course when you have sold the tickets you have the event already so you have the money in yeah. so so why would you consider that to be important so so i think it comes to there a lot of people talking about brian tracy keith cunningham asking the questions that what if you had the same customers for life mm. where would that be and uh, so when you start building from there you're thinking like okay what would need to happen that you would actually get to keep the customers so then you actually think that if they love being with you so they will not change and they will come back mm. and uh, so so kind of the the way we do it is, of course, we are thinking that um, we're launching the next event during the event and, and, mm. and helping them to decide to come back and try to make them feel that. So when mm. we go, go backtrack, so what would need to happen that they can make a decision a year ahead mm. uh, and buy tickets for next year. So, mm. so then we are going back. Okay, of course, the speeches itself need to be good, mm. but the overall experience needs to be that this was something special. If you think of like music bands or something, mm. you have your favorites, but if you see them, mm. um, do you go to see the next gig as well mm. maybe not so so how to build that so um so we are thinking actually we have a couple of guidelines so we, we treat customers as they are our best friends so we are thinking all the time that what if your friend was going to a wedding and and you see that <laughs> that, that, that the person doesn't have a nice shirt on what would yeah. you do you would tell the friend that come on can i help you with something please loan my jacket and go mm. there so you will look nice yeah. then we're thinking other that friend is stuck in traffic and saying like um i don't have a um, I'm feeling cold or something. So you're, you're again helping there. Or you're mm. thirsty. So you're, you're doing these things for your best friend. So, so that's the attitude that we have. Mm. And um, what we do is that we measure a lot of things. So when we get feedback from customers, so we look at very intensively what they were actually mm. giving us credit and what they were complaining about. So many times we get complaints about food or there were long queues. And we're thinking, what can we do about those things? So mm. we go really into detail thinking and planning. and. Uh, um, many event organizers they plan for maybe three months before the event we mm. plan for two years yeah. or more yeah. so so even if we have an event coming so we're already thinking ahead so for the next event so what will the changes be there as well so kind of like step by step detail by detail focusing on all these things and then it comes to them when we meet customers so we actually love them because we like if you arrange a party for your friends mm -hmm. when they come you're smiling and greeting yeah. and you want to show what you've got so we have yeah. that same attitude so we kind of consider it to be the party with best friends so then all the experience that we have there are for the customers and enjoy so i think those kind of combine them details to be in, in together to work for that goal party with eight thousand best friends at yeah. the same time yeah that's <laughs> more, how it, in the end it comes but like you know yourself that parties become bigger and bigger if you, somebody yeah. hears, hears that there's a good party yeah, they want yeah. to join next time as yeah, well yeah yeah sure um, i believe that you have in a way two groups working for you you have the the uh, the basic group who works like day to day with the Nokia Business Forum, and then you have a, a huge group of volunteers yeah. who work with you during the events. So, well, first of all, how many volunteers do you have per event? For example, here in Helsinki. Yeah, actually, yeah, we have others. We 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 are we have work with students who actually okay. get credit from school. So yeah. so kind of they they do their internship or or get courses out of it. So we we train them. Our mission is to build leaders who change the world. So yeah. I, we feel that it's good that we actually give them a chance to shine because yeah. we are talking about business leaders so they actually a lot of them get jobs if they do a good job and and it's good on a cv that they were helping there so in we have a core team about 30 people then we have will have about 300 students attending there we will train 16 of them for the big event to be team leaders so mm. the program lasts for eight to ten months and we are really giving them tools they have full empowerment to do that so during the event they actually i remember last time they were, i got a on my radio phone saying that bring your credit cards here that we want to use them <laughs> no questions asked they took give, they took my pin code and just spent the money and i'm just like good but just for the customer so so kind of like we build them for that and apart from those so of course then we have catering staff and others so in total we are talking about 900 to 1000 people working at the event at, at the single time there so so that comes huge then but students are are a big part of the customer experience because then they have the empowerment that they are actually in the task that they they meet a lot of customers some are in the cloak room some are guiding the hosting groups um, um customers service roles and all these things so they are really huge part of that and and we actually value with uh, the ideas that they have so what we do with them is we give the ideas that we had last year what we got good feedback on we show them and ask what you, what can you come up with something new yeah. and remember what we got good feedback on do those things as well but like they are challenging themselves to be better and better each year so that works quite well for us as well that's yes, good <laughs> So you have a huge group of uh, people overall working working for the event. So, and uh, most of them are more or less volunteers. So, so how are you able to build that type of culture and implement that type of attitude to the all the people 
who serve the customers during the event because I think that it's it's like the, the toughest part of that. Yeah. Well, um, we work with people. We all yeah. people feel appreciated, so they tend to do a good job, yeah. and we value them. We talk about why we do this, so we share the the mission that we want. We we talk about like why we do this ourselves. Why do we love it, and and then come with them as well in the selection process. We talk about a lot of these things. Why do you come there, and and and. We are kind of picky that if you kind of give a reason that we are not mm. happy with, so they said they want to meet a speaker, so we are like, no, we want to offer the <laughs> yeah. best customer service. Yeah. So, so you kind of have to have the heart for that. So that starts from the selection as well. Um, then we have a head of customer experience, so Sala Seppa, who's kind of a super nice person herself, and and she trains people there. We are kind of like folding it. We show example. I go there and speak and help them and give them appreciation. And like I explained before that. Um, they have a lot of power to do decisions. So actually, we we empower them in a way that nobody else does, and they feel proud of that, and they want to solve these kind of things. We talk about um, problems and solutions that we have ha- had before, so the kind of that we say we trust that you will come up with so so kind of like building the general spirit of us that we do this together and we are there. So many times, like we all the core team ourselves as well, we are working like them. So so like um, if somebody needs to clean the toilet, so so somebody can call me and say that why don't you go and clean the toilet? So mm-hmm. kind of that. The, then they feel happy like the CEO will work for me so they are happy in, in many ways but we talk about a lot of these things we have guest speakers and and like what's the difference and and kind of again we have this kind of main main core values that we talk about that what what do we want to actually give to customers so we kind of talk about energizing experience smooth experience um, being the best friend that you can act yourself and then kind of applaud on those good things so so generally all the time like talking about what can we do and solving problems together talking about why we do this and and just like build the, that we are as working as a team and equals i think that is really important part of that and and that that just brings the results all the time smiling at each other so how we treat each other is then shown with the customers so that's a crucial part of that sounds good so you have you could say pretty good grounds or foundations for for all the attendees or i mean volunteers who come to work with you during the events yeah um how many of the attendees sorry again the volunteers how many of those are coming back to work with you during the next event and the next event yeah so a lot of them actually um if they go for school for four years there are people that come each year yeah. and and we have that kind of the team leader course which is super valued and a lot of time like actually companies they hire all of them they know what mm. the training has they've been and how they have managed their teams so we actually give they will manage their teams during the event so that's also one perk that you get so you can first an experience in a really kind of uh, difficult and demanding environment to get to be a team leader for a bigger group of people um, so if you want to be a team leader you need to be with us first on the ground level so yeah, that yeah. kind of helps you there but they, then they become fans as well they love the feeling that they get they love the, the attention that the customers give back they get some sometimes they get flowers from customers for the next day that yeah, thanks yeah. for helping all these things yeah, so so, so it's like a, um, kind of a game that how well can we do and they enjoy that and they want to come back and of course hopefully they, they, they love the, the things that we do for them as well like training and helping and the, how we have relationships with them we support them in the future a lot of them work with us uh, on side projects or so on so we help them to find jobs and so on so they they love to be with us and we love to be with them so I think that ties it together everybody wants to stay in that group that's fun to be and like the party that you want to go for mm. you want to be the arranger of the party as well the same mm. way that because you loved the way it went yeah, yeah. so what sort of uh, influence has those superior customer experiences had regarding the the viral marketing of nordic business forum and your sales and and overall marketing because i can recall many stories seen on facebook and instagram when somebody has told their lovely story about if they had had let's say a broken jacket and somebody has fixed it during a break of the event so what sort of influence has this all had for for the success of your event it has a huge influence of course the the end product needs to be in good shape so yeah. the speakers need to be world class what we promise the theme like if you have rethinking business or something that needs to tie there mm. but then you can imagine yourself that was just one single experience for you but then you rethink again mm. um, good examples um, a customer lost an apple pen for instance and then just came to ask that where's my apple pen and did you find it and the, 
they took a note who that person was and said they will come back and then they were thinking they couldn't find the apple pen so they went to downtown bought a new apple pen and then sent an sms to the customer that you can pick up a new apple pen here yeah. and uh, <laughs> the customers like counting that that costs hundreds of years like like but you give it to me for free yeah. and and they're yeah but because you lost your apple pen it's not yeah. like that when you think so then, then the customers like like they, they're just like amazed at what why and how come and so they tweeted mm-hmm. out and say that this is here and this person happened to be a ceo of uh, of, uh, of a group list, uh, stock listed company so yeah. of course a lot of fans they're like oh my god this you get and so you get these things somebody spills coffee on a shirt and actually a person next to you gives you the shirt and says that like i can be without a shirt and yeah. so kind of these things so then you just feel so special like how, how why would you leave that company why wouldn't you be the customer for that company where you mm. treat it like that so so those those are super important things and then of course it builds the kind of the fan base with customers so they're already waiting for what like what can happen next mm. and it's 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 like fun so when you are in trouble and somebody helps you the feeling that you get so so we we talk about a lot about that that it's not about what you do but it's how you make the person feel and um, a lot of us make that if you trust that company you trust the experience so so it's an easy decision to go there when we travel so if we really love one place so we can go back it's just easy to go there it's like less stress you know what you're gonna get so mm-hmm. and if it's a really good experience so you just want that and mm-hmm. and especially if you somewhere else go and you don't get that so you kind of miss that experience so it's it's a crucial part of our our um, sales and marketing is that and customers like we are if you look at the big business events in the world so we actually get the most tweets and so, uh, shares on social media mm-hmm. of the events like even the world business forum or c2 montreal and the leader cast and so on so because customers not only about the speeches but about the experience that they get and when that goes out so then they talk about write about it we are um, examples in speaking ourselves a lot about those things so that's a good reputation for us and people just come to see that and if they like it they stay so it's, it's working really well for us so have you guys been able to adapt that that feeling and uh, you know the, the the opportunity for for the attendees to have the type of experiences to all the cities that you organize the events in in Norway in Sweden and here in Finland yeah we have been of course like uh, easier probably in the home grounds when we know like operating if you change the venue and all that but we are super much focusing on that that we will do that so kind of like the feeling is that we don't want to leave any customer disappointed at anything a yeah. lot of things are not our fault if it's raining outside it's not our fault but yeah. what if we can still make the customer feel that they didn't get wet so so when we get to those things so then then it really works and and overall like the, the the growth that happens is like um on average 55 to 70 percent of the customers actually mm-hmm. buy a ticket for next year yeah. immediately yeah. so if you think that you get the sales a year ahead and an event organizer so for the cash flow and everything so so basically it's a risk free to arrange the next event whereas yeah. many have that that they need to sell it out and then thinking should i come back and then in the end you just get the peak of sales and then you're like oh my god so with mm-hmm. us it j- just goes the opposite the record has been that in six days we've been so- sold out and then we had to increase the capacity because of that and again it was sold and it did through three months but we just w- when you get to keep the customers and their experiences so then the sales is easy in the end how many tickets were sold in that example yeah that was five thousand three hundred five hundred thousand tickets in six days but yeah. it basically comes so so it, we, we will sell four to five to six thousand tickets on the spot with the customers existing when we launch the next event and and that's the base of the kind of the stability that we want as a company as well So we've been talking more or less about how you can influence to the or build the superior customer experience on the spot during the event. But uh, how do you guys influence to the overall customer experience? How do how do you build it? Yeah, well, we we have this kind of attitude that of course that we want to generate value in each conversation with us. So what we do after the event is we have a list of attendees. So we we try to call them all immediately and and ask for feedback and then yeah. ask that okay, what was good, what was bad, but also at the same time, will you come back? So, so we, we talk with each customer and uh, interact a lot with them. So kind of like it's, it's not a heavy sales calls that you buy. First, we want to listen to what, mm-hmm. what, what you have in your mind and building from that. So we get them. So, so basically, if we had about 8000 people in the audience, so within two, three months, we have talked with all of them. If we had just managed to reach them on the phone. And, and, and that's why also when, when they get that, so they value that we want to listen to them. We make changes based on the feedback. Mm-hmm. And then, then, of course, a lot of them tend to buy the tickets and the same with marketing. So we thank 
thank them, serve them a lot, and like be in constant like the uh, contact with them. So we think that the more contact points we have with them, the better. We have mm-hmm. a, a customer focus group insiders that we call them and that we talk openly about things. They will taste the menus that we're gonna offer and they give mm-hmm. us feedback. So so we actually co-create a lot of stuff with customers. So we can even ask what you want there, what was cute, what was not, what don't you need. Yeah. So so the, then we are really close with them. So we can actually serve them and they actually value when they can give the feedback and work together with us. And I think that builds the fan fan base and that we are doing it, doing it together so we are not just an event organizer for them we are doing it together so they want to enhance their experience with us and then we have a product that they will buy that must be a funny situation when the ceo comes to the monthly monthly meeting with the group and tells that now we have this awesome task that we can call to all our eight <laughs> thousand best friends <laughs> and get the feedback Yeah, but then again, I, yeah, that, but that's a g- good example. That if you had friends, would you want to call back them after yeah. the party? How was it? Did you like it? Yeah. And so kind of that that's part of the the feeling that you share together, and that's what we are trying to do as well. And and it's it those are fun conversations. So it's not like you don't need to stress about them. You're just happy, and then you get those feedback. Like friends give you as well. Like oh, I I didn't like that beer that you were offering. So yeah. so would you next time? So then yes, why not? And then it's like a, it's a fun conversation. So there's nothing to be to worry about. People love to do that. We are super excited to do that and we do it immediately like after that many even organized they think that they need to rest for three weeks we take the next two months really heavily working and then we rest after that so yeah. that we get that feedback the feelings with customers and conversations going on then we can rest how long does it take to have those eight thousand calls Well, that, yeah, I said like two, maybe two, three months. It depends on like now we had two thousand international guests, yeah, so yeah. The, those sometimes are a bit harder to reach. Yeah. Um, but that's about it. So we can make um, thousand to yeah, about thousand calls a week is a, is doable for us. So then it will take eight weeks to go that through. Okay. So how about some conclusions about how to build superior customer experiences? First of all. Why do you think that it's important that all the event organizers would be willing and able to build superior customer experiences during their events? Yeah. Well, first of all, why do you do the events? Yeah. I think you're doing it for the customers. So so you need to actually serve what they want. And if they enjoy it, then better off you are. So they actually bought a product from you and they value it. So that's what you mm. the outcome should be. Yeah. Um, then if they're happy, superior customer experience, they come back. And so it's easier for you as a business to arrange. And it's easier actually to make developments for the same people than for new people. So you know mm. what they're thinking and so on. And uh, how to build it up from the start is that you need to enjoy that and and everybody needs to be aligned to talk a lot about why we do this and spend time together so kind of preparation part is important so Mm. so we we go there to the empty seminar halls and just sense the feeling that soon this will be full fulfilled with people of feeling mm. there and you will meet them we will smile so we kind of mm. mentally prepare ourselves for that part and then we smile together we work together um high-fiving a- each one all the time so kind mm. of that we get to the spirit there all the time and then mm. we also try try to think of, of as a customer what kind of painkillers you have so toilet lines where can i find coffee if i'm cold and so things these things so kind of like going through those things first yourself and thinking like how can we fix that and so these details come to parts so there's tons of details you need to go but they are not hard mm. and then when you've done them all you're prepared so you can actually act upon it so yeah well how about we talked earlier about the how to build the the culture and feeling among the uh, volunteers yeah. like have the the end tips how are you able for example here in finland because the Finns are Finns, yeah. so how are you able to have all the volunteers for example smile yeah well we, we start from appreciating them so we yeah. thank a lot of time um, give them credit on what they're doing explain why it's important and uh, make them feel that they can actually do a difference so so we always each interaction so we're saying that if you greet a people and they are smiling or they are not smiling so what's the difference mm. but we act as the same way as ourselves the core team as well so we value they are helping us um, working so we are working for them there so we let them know that too so I'm all the time as a CEO I'm explaining to them that thanks you're coming here I really appreciate 
appreciate that mm. smiling and then giving them examples what they can do with me so they are not mm. afraid of me so i will ask them challenging questions for instance uh, what should i do in this situation and then mm. let them also make decisions so so with this they build the confidence and they are happy about the appreciation the value we give for them and then we kind of set the goals together that okay last year we got this feedback from mm. customers can we get it better and then mm. they take it the, the goal of themselves and then we ask like and together kind of find the solutions to what would need to happen that we would be better it becomes mm. kind of a game of showing everybody that we can do it better we love when customers give feedback and people actually uh, smile is like money that the mm. more you get that so yeah. actually the better you feel so then you get to that mode and all that but it, i think it comes more more on that we actually pay attention to that that they everything for their needs is catered for and that the value is their empowerment they can do decisions so so they can take my credit card and buy stuff for the customers at any time or other mm. people there mm. so they can just make these dishes so they feel happy about that have you ever been able to measure what sort of influence has this all the culture of being able to serve superior customer experiences have had to your business well yeah basically then i think the best part is that we see when we launch the next event so how many of the customers come back and, and yeah. so on so kind of run, growing from 80 customers to 8,000 so so that is because the existing customers come back so there are still people who were in the group of 80 who come back this today and have been in all the events that we have had yeah. so kind of that is then so kind of the we can uh, measure the how many of the existing customers come back and how many new ones and how the reputation grows so we we see that too and and that's the kind of the secret source for our growth so regarding the 2020 events for example here in Finland how many tickets are still available or are there any well, they are still, yeah. We have about, uh, we're, we're trying to expand. So about 2,000, a bit more than 2,000 to go. Yeah. And um, uh, so, so over 6,000 already sold. Well, about 6,000 is sold, yes. And there are still uh, how many months? Well, now we talk about uh, yeah, eight and a half months to go. Eight and a half months. Yeah. I think that that's some sort of record. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Re- re- regarding the sales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it it, it is it's it's not happening easily. And of course, mm-hmm. like existing customers still thinking. So so we're expecting more of the the ones that we were with us to buy and then new ones to come. But we are we are happily smiling and we know it's going to be the best event so far. So so kind mm-hmm. of we are just happy to arrange the party again and yeah. let's see how many will come. Yeah. yeah. So um, thanks, Aslak, for your time. In case the viewers or listeners would like to know more about. Nordic Business Forum as a company or about their events where can we find more information yeah well thanks for having me it's been super nice um, you can go to our website mbforum.com so nb so like Nordic Business Forum but short on there and you'll find all the information you need or contact us we are more than happy to tell what's what we are all about okay thanks Aslak for your time and uh, for the viewers and listeners we'll see you on the next episode thanks yep.